What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for all of your pre-orders on the puzzle. You can check out the last video if you're wondering what I'm talking about, but it's blown my mind, the number of people that have purchased that. Thank you so much. Uh, today on the channel, we have Muscadine Bloodline, a band that I love, that I know a lot of you love. They are a duo from Alabama that I really believe in, and we had a really interesting discussion. You know, I wanted their perspective as independent country musicians about what it's like to be an independent musician. And I kind of thought we were going to do like a little game lit kind of thing, but we ended up talking for almost an hour and a half. And so I just think it's an interesting discussion and I'll try and timestamp it and you can check it out here. You got to listen to their new music. Dying for a living is this like honky tonker boot stomper of a song. And what I think is really interesting about them right now is they seem to be really at this kind of turning point in their career where they've been independent for a long time. They have figured out kind of what works for them. And now they are getting ready to like shift into high gear. And so I just think this is a super interesting discussion about Nashville, about Texas, about being independent, about money, about touring, all those kinds of things. And at one point, I kind of give my assumptions of advice that I would want to give independent artists and let them weigh in. I love these dudes. Their names are Gary and Charlie. They have a new album coming out soon. I got to see them live in Charlottesville and they killed it. And the title track of this record, I won't give it away, but you'll know in a week. Um, it's awesome. Also, production standards aren't perfect on this whatsoever. My head is kind of cut off the whole interview and I look just like I weigh a thousand pounds. You know, I'm learning as I go. I have this one camera and I was trying to fit all three of us in frame and it ain't perfect. If you see me looking at the camera, it's because this shuts off every 30 minutes and I didn't want to, you know, accidentally not be recording. So one man show up in here. So hope you enjoy. So I'm here with Muscadine Bloodline. Thank you for being on the channel. Welcome hey, to the channel. Um, welcome to my house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you abducted us, so that's it. <laughs> I know. I have one behind a backstage and you just grab them. Okay, I want to know a tiny bit because we're going to be talking in this video about like, sort of like a, a marketing career-ish type video, but like, how did you guys, you met in Alabama, as I understand it correctly, what's like the elevator pitch on kind of how you got started? Take it. Um, so, obviously we, we were like pseudo making music before we met, you know, and we were the only guys in our hometown that had a crappy digital camera and were putting up like cover videos on Facebook at the time. That was like the only platform that mattered. This is before IG, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Facebook was like the only, it was basically like YouTube at the, you know, at the time. But, and so we just knew of each other through that. And ironically, we have like hundreds of mutual friends. We grew up like two miles away from each other. Where? In Mobile. 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 And never, yeah. and never met. Yeah. yeah. Went to different private schools and like had just it's insane how many mutual friends and I'd like I'll say that a million times because it's actually insane it's <laughs> weird but um so I went to Auburn um briefly and then Gary went to Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg Mississippi and um we kind of just like got to this point where Gary was about to graduate college and I was about to actually I need to go back a little bit more okay go back I need to go back a hair more like when we first met I, I had just started like a cover band in Auburn and I was coming down just the playing for us. Yeah, like yeah. playing fraternities and like. What was your signature? Like signature song. I mean, farmhouse. I, honestly, <laughs> I I hadn't even learned enough about playing cover songs for people live yet. I was just playing like Blackberry Smoke covers, and, yeah, <laughs> wow. and stuff like that. Like taste. Like people didn't even know the songs I was playing, but I was like, this is cool to me. Like I was like, I love that. But anyways. I played a show at Soul Kitchen in Mobile, and a lot of people threw Gary's name in the hat to come open. And he came and opened, I think it was like, were you still in high school? I was just about to go to college. Yeah, like so you had just graduated mm -hmm. high school. And so that's when we initially first like shook hands and were like, hey, what's up? And, I mean, from then on, we just kind of kept up. We had no like interest or desire to create together. It was just kind of like, we were just buddies. You yeah. Know, and, and yeah, I went to college and I, I've always wanted to be a songwriter. That's And so I went to school for entertainment industry management. So it's basically, it's Southern Miss. They have a program that's like the crappiest version of what like a kid goes to Belmont to do. Mm -hmm. And so there's like, there's no, there's no relations, no really jobs, no anything. And so I went up there, but I gained a little bit of knowledge on just like, copyright law and and different things about how to just start kind of you know a band and so i i just came to my like junior year of college broke up with a girl and just really kind of hit my stride in writing and then started uh uh just an original band called something sweet 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, like you could probably look it up or whatever. But like uh, the name was should. literally something sweet. Yes, or, yeah, okay. you should yes. definitely look the it up. Na- and uh, <laughs> and it was just with some buddies, and it it gradually like turned instead of like, hey, we're this we're this original band to like, oh dang, there's like a lot of money like in playing these these private gigs, weddings, fraternities, fraternities yourself, bar yeah. gigs, whatever. So it ter- changed from like. Hey, we're this band out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. We're going to take on the world to like, hey, we're just this cover band that plays every weekend. Yeah. And so, but still kind of had like the writing thing kind of going on. And uh, then Charlie and I really, I put out a, pro- uh, a project that was just uh, Gary Stanton EP. And then after that, Charlie was like, dude, let, let's write. Like, because I, I want to put out some original music. I'm yes. kind of in the same boat you're in. I had finally learned at the time, like, I was like, I'm going nowhere. Like, I'm playing all the time, and I'm making money to get, like, I'm sustainable, and I don't have a regular job, which mm-hmm. was all I wanted at the time, you know? <laughs> but, like, it finally came down to, like, brass tacks, and I was like, oh, well, I'm not gonna, ever going to be able to leave this bar if I don't put out original music. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so that's when I hit up the only songwriter friend I knew was Gary. And you were still in the South, like, deep I was South still in school. Auburn, okay. and yeah. he was still in Hattiesburg. Mm-hmm. And I had, and kind of fast forward a little bit, like I had always had intentions of moving to Nashville once I graduated. So like I, I didn't know like what that was going to be, whether it was like I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to be a songwriter, work at a label, work just, I wanted, knew I just wanted to work in music, like whatever that was. And so then kind of once I did that and I was like, you know, I'm going to go try, Charlie. Like, why don't you come? And so. Yeah, he kind of was a big reason why I even like, you know, for lack of a better term, grew the balls to like say, oh, I'm just going to leave Auburn. Or whatever, yeah. and because because like I said, he was the guy that was like, "I'm going anyway." It'd be sick if you came too. Like, still had no desire to be be in a band. Yeah, but it was just like, just let's just do it. Let's yeah. just go figure it out. And then we started. Well, there was like a six month period where we kind of just started playing together. It's like Charlie had some gigs, I had some gigs, and we we're like, "Hey, you know what? Let's just like." Get this place in Nashville. I I moved up three months before him, and then he just got an air mattress. And when we would go tour Alabama, I wouldn't even call it tour. We yeah. go play <laughs> loosely. We go play our acoustic cover gigs that we've already had to make money, while we could just focus on what we were doing. It was kind of like, okay, we'll just like I got this room. It's super cheap. We were living for like two hundred and fifty bucks in Nashville, like hella cheap. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. And so we were just like coming. We'd go tour all the way down to Mobile, hang out in Mobile with our family and friends, and then go work our way back up, be in Nashville for a couple of days. And we just did that literally for like a year and yeah, a half. And all the and all the while, like while that was happening, we were touring as Charlie and Gary. Yeah. Like there was no <laughs> and it wasn't even like a brand thing. It wasn't like, hey, it's just like, oh, we're just t- t- playing. Like, we're together. just like, this is fun. Yeah. We're just playing. Charlie. It sounds yeah. like a like a fifties like, like yeah, cheers yeah. to the Osmonds or yeah, something. Yes. <laughs> and so but so it was just kinda like we were just going out playing covers and then we kinda just were like, Okay, Charlie, you got a hell of a voice. I got some songs. Let's go in the studio. And yeah, let's figure something we out. put a, and we went in and did three songs with the guy we still produce with today. After we went through the whole, we, and we'll get to that. But we uh, st- still record with that guy now. But we went in and recorded three songs, I think, for like a thousand dollars. Also, actually, we recorded four. Oh yeah, and we recorded one with Lenny Wilson, like in two thousand and like fifteen. Yeah, we never put it out. No yeah. one, no one will ever hear that. Yeah, one. but but uh, that's just a fun fact. It was just the songs that I had, and I was like, okay, I think the here's three songs that are kind of different. And one was Shut Your Mouth, one was Porch Swing Angel, and one was Southern Boy Cure. And we put out Southern Boy Cure first, and we were like, I don't even know what they're gonna like from us, but let's give three songs that are kind of different and see which one sticks. And f- f- out of nowhere, give for- to who. Like, give to, give, the give to the world. Our, our okay. minimal yeah. fan base. We were like, I don't know where where we stand our in this. <laughs> yeah, our friends. And so, but that's, we kind of just started. And I, if we keep going, you have more questions because we can tend to talk. So we had a po- we have a podcast talking. too, so we get we get caught up in that. But uh, we. Yeah, uh, but that's basically like the consumption. Yes. Of like how Muscadine came yeah. to be. That was when it first started. Like when we finally went to the yeah. studio and we're like, yeah. we're cutting songs. And, and we went into the studio without a band name. Like or anything, mm-hmm. we're just like let's just try it and we'll then figure it out. We'll band and we threw a band name together, and then what? What? And Muscadine's a grape, right? Yes. Yes. And the kind of wine. Yes. And a blood is, is often a metaphor for wine. What's yeah. the story? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's ahead. pretty simple. Uh, we wanted to. D- we are like stands of the Turnpike Troubadours. I grew up in a thicket like a Muscadine. Okay. So we love them, and I've always loved like two 
like band names are like always tough because it's easy to go Gary Stan, Charlie Muncaster, or whatever. I mean, look at Nashville. That's yeah, like, that's all it is. Yeah, and we're like, how can we have this cool name that kind of like we don't really know what our style is or whatever. Edgy, yeah, yeah, and it's like I want to see it on a, a poster with. Ten names of country artists, and then that one looks the most intriguing. Okay. You're like, who is? What do they do? Yeah, because it sounds this. like it could be a metal band or like I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, what are these? But guys? but it's like you know, Muscat is great. Where we're grown, you make wine with it. It's sweet, and we're like, okay, that's something that's like inherently southern, and we are southern guys from South Alabama. And then Bloodline, which is kind of like your heritage, where you come mm-hmm. from. It was the lucky name that rhymed with Muscat. Yeah, and we, <laughs> and we kind of wanted to have something that kind of just. When you say them both together, it kind of just kind of flows. Like yeah. so, and we were like, "All right, well, I, I like it enough. He likes it enough. Let's do it. And, send it. Send it." And then Charlie always says, "Kind of funny. He's like, band names like suck until they work. Yeah, and so, all band names suck unless they work. Yeah, so that's a great thought. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> everything does sound like when you have your friend that starts a band, you're like." That sounds real stupid. Yeah, you're like, you're like it, gossiping about it. You're like, I don't know, man. It's not very <laughs> yeah. really catchy. Like, I don't oh, know. man, I always wish I had started. I always wish I had a brand as my channel name, not my name yeah. as my <laughs> channel name. Like, yeah. I, my nickname forever has been Shady Grady, and I wish yeah. I'd, like, launched <laughs> with that. Yeah. Um, but then when you tell your friends, they're like, that's dumb. Just yeah. use your name. But, yeah. but if it worked, it's like, hey, what? You, that's all Shady Grady, dude. It's like. <laughs> so when I first heard of Musket Eye and Bloodline, would have been a couple years after this, it sounds like, yeah. you've, you kind of started touring together and then the headline on every article would have been something to the effect of a Luke Laird produced EP mm. um, and, and if you don't know who Luke Laird is you probably do and don't know that you do just because he's there's probably like five songs in the top 20 of country radio that he well, yeah. Yeah. produced or wrote 20, over or, 25 hits yeah. Yeah. And, and so like I'm a huge fan of his yeah. um, and a lot of the things he touches I'm like damn that sounds awesome Yeah. Um, a producer like that is trying to create a successful act and so I'm wondering were you hoping to like reel in a big label at that point in your career hoping to maybe go the big route because I'm kind of framing you here as these indie guys. Yeah, but honestly, I mean, I think we just admired like the little attention that we got when we first got to town. You know, like we moved to town with just everyone moves to town and they're like, we're going to be the biggest, we're just going to be the best, we're mm-hmm. going to do this thing, everybody. And so, like, this it's kind of a funny story about Luke Laird because we're huge fans of Luke too. And, and he's the and nicest like, guy ever. Creative yeah. Nation. Yeah. I call him on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's they're, so nice. They're yeah. super people and they're, and they're great. And um, but Luke Laird hit us on Facebook message <laughs> yeah. one day and it was like, and I, and, and I've told him this story a hundred times, but I was like, I didn't know who he was. <laughs> and I was like, who's this, this dude, Luke Laird, like said he digs our music. And he wants to write. We didn't know who he was. Yeah, he wants to write. And, uh, we we're sitting in the movie theater at the time, like watching a movie or something. And, and I like Googled him and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> and I was like, I think we should maybe meet with this dude, you know? And so, but that we, we had met with Creative Nation and. I mean, it was the, they, they offered us a pub deal, and, and for us at the time, it was like money, you know, like, and, and a producer, and like all these things that we didn't have, and, yeah. so, and so it was like the perfect fit at the time, Yeah, you know, we, we I, signed the deal with Creative Nation, and... Yeah, you know, like Charlie said, it was just like having, like, when, when you get to a point where like, it's like, okay, I got money now to where I can eat every month and pay my rent doing music, and that's like the first like hurdle every musician runs into. And so it, it we kinda could take back and say, hey, we don't have to go to, you know, play this barbecue joint in, you know, Waveland, Mississippi or, or wherever wherever the hell we are. And it's <laughs> and it's just like we don't have to, you know, play for hundred and fifty bucks, play five nights a week. Now we're writing with people. These are actually good writers we're getting put in rooms with. We're and learning that, more about right. writing and, and the thing with Luke Laird it was kind of was kind of pitched to us like we did an artist development deal with with the Creative Nation. So it wasn't just a straight publishing deal. Right. And so, like, if that needs differentiation of that, like, our development deal is kind of like, hey, we're going to be the label right now. It's until, like a miniature record deal. Yeah. Until they yeah. upstream you to the label, then take a percentage for getting you to that point. Yeah. And so, basically, it was, like, kind of framed, like, hey, we'll do, you know, Luke Laird's going rate is usually this, but since you're with us, it's with this. So, and we were kind of like, well, he did do a Casey Musgraves record and won a Grammy, so right. let's <laughs> I mean, let's do it. You know, absolutely. it's like, he knows what he's doing. And it was, a, it was an experience, you know, because all we'd ever known is how we recorded, where it's like, we knew a drummer, we knew <laughs> yeah. a, a guitar player, the guy, fortunately, we did it with, played bass, and we played everything else. And so it was just kind of like having you come to the studio, and they play everything, and, and just having 
these pros come in that do this every day. Like, I mean, it's like these weird, like these songs you've crafted and took so long and you've played in your head and these studio guys come in here and they bang it out in like 15 minutes. And it's yeah. like, okay, on to the next one. <laughs> and it's like, whoa, that's... Well, just- it's like the coolest slash the most like interesting feeling at the same time because you're like, like you said, you like have these ideas in your head and you're, you've played these things and it's like, it just gets done so fast and you're like, wait, wait like I, I didn't, maybe we should change... And it's just like done. Like you're like whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, and Can we slow down. Like shit. Right, and 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 it was like I said, it's a learning experience. You got to go in there and see how it's done. And you know, we did the create. We did two, you know, projects with Luke Laird while we were there, and we were at Creative Nation, I think, for two, two years. years. And uh, and it was great because like the biggest thing I got out of it is like you're writing with better people and you're getting reps, and so that creative juice is always going. And that's kind of like now we can sit at home and I feel like we can write a song and we don't need, you know, extra help. All, if we don't, all this thing, we don't you know. Yeah. And uh, honestly, artist desires kind of, you know, through this time, we're, we're kind of changing too. And we just really weren't happy with our situation there. And like if, we were taking meetings, like we took a meeting with every label in town. Yeah. And then the goal was to upstream, you know, like yeah. that's the whole reason why like small pub companies sign artists. And so, but we never got an offer, never never upstreamed. And so after a while, we were just kind of like, okay, so we're giving away 50% of our masters and we're not signing a deal. Like, we're not, okay, so like, wh- why are we giving away 50% of our masters? No. And so that was really what it came yeah. down to. It was like, we saw how much money we were giving away when we knew that we could do this by ourselves. And, and I feel like there was a point, too, we were kind of feel like we were missing the mark, too, with the music we were putting out. It wasn't yeah, exactly creative, how we wanted yeah, to do it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that, that was the thing. And then they were fortunate enough to be like, hey, guys, like, if y'all aren't happy here, like, we'll yeah. just they cut just, ties. It's just, no, it's no problem. And that doesn't happen. And so that yeah. just, yeah. that's just like the testament to, like, the layers. They are great. They people. told us that from the beginning, though. They're like, if y'all don't want to work with us, like, we don't want to work with y'all. Like, yeah. that's just how it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Why, why would we drag this out? Yeah. You know? And, and the, another thing, too, is, like, these small publishing companies, independent ones, are, are kind of becoming, like, everything. That's why these artist development deals are becoming, you know, so popular because they, they're the record label. A lot of times they're the manager, and we were the only client they had that wasn't managed by mm-hmm. Creative Nation. So a part of us, like, artists are selfish, down downright, at the bottom line. And so we just kind of felt like, we were getting kind of a backseat to, you know, other artists on opportunities because we weren't managed by them as well. And then also, too, I think we were just kind of like, well, but we're the ones, like, selling tickets, like, playing the shows. Like, our brand's growing the most out of everyone else here. Like, why aren't we getting attention, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, and like I said, you just got to check your ego. And that's something we've learned growing. I mean, it's been three years since, or four years right. almost since all that stuff. It feels like forever. And then, honestly, we were just like, you know what, let's just kind of cut ties. We... We got to a point where not many artists do is where we were actually all these records that we spent a lot of money on, we recouped them all. And so like that's the thing is like Creative Nation still makes fifty percent of those projects that make money. And so it's like we got to the point where we're like, Okay, we're recouped, like we don't feel indebted to you and now like we are building a brand, we're selling hard tickets, we're playing these four hundred, five hundred cat rooms all across the country and people are coming. Like regardless if the labels don't like it, people lo- seem to like it. So we'll just keep doing what we're doing. That's so cool that they kind of let you spread your wings and, and felt mutually about it because I talk to a lot of artists that I think have been in the game for so long and have been sort of not in a, in a nefarious way, but almost like being gaslit, being told like this is how it works, this is like how a radio tour works, this is how this works, and, and you talk to them years into their career and it's just like there's this weird muscle memory of like, oh, what I think doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's very like it's strange. Like it is kind of right? it's conditioned like that a yes. little bit in the, in the cog of the business, you know, yeah. like there's so many different opinions and like one thing that Gary and I always try to remind ourselves is like, hey dude, like we're the CEO of like our thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, no matter like what your manager's opinion is, no matter, I mean, you value their opinion, but like at the end of the day, if it ain't cool with us, it ain't happening. Yeah, I ain't doing and it. And that's one thing we learned that was like very important, I think, to like spearhead your career in the right direction is just be like, trust your gut to, in our, our gut, in our yeah. case. But it's like, man, like it just really doesn't matter if like, this guy wants you to be or, or to say or sing this and you don't want to sing it, it's like no one's going to believe it. That's why I admire like 
Miranda Lambert, Eric Church, like that needle is so hard to thread to it be is, at that is, level to listen to people and clearly take the risks you need to take to get yeah. to the stratosphere of yeah. success. But also there's these clear moments where it's like, no, you bet on yourself and your weird perspective yeah. at this point in your career. Yeah, it's like, Absolutely. I mean, a person like even Miranda Lambert, it's like, who would in their right mind be like, yeah, the play here is the Marfa tapes. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's, and, and no I mean, they're idea. great. Yeah. Like, they're awesome. And, but it's just like, I, I guarantee that wasn't like the label heads being like, yeah, that's it. Let's go <laughs> this raw acoustic album. Here we go. So, really kind of starting out, it was like, in that situation, once we got out of that, it was kind of, in a way, it's like, we were kind of forced into independence. And so, now it's just like a forced independence that we now enjoy. Yeah. And and, and so it was, it's a thing where it's like, okay, no no labels are biting. It's still growing. We're making, we're finally getting, like financially it's it's working out and we're just going to keep, you know, our heads down, keep doing what we're doing and just. We just, we always kept the mindset of, hey, no one's going to help us. Yeah. Like if they do or not down the road, that's great. But mm-hmm. like, let's just pretend that no one's going to help. And what do you do? Yeah, that's what we're doing. And where did you end up when you started doing that and putting out your music? And like, where did you find your audience mostly? Was it coming out of the Red Dirt world? Was there a scene in particular it was coming out of? Or see, that's such an interesting question because ever since I would say like Poor Swing Angel, ever since like we put out our second song ever, we like I was we we've, we've always been a fan of the Red Dirt scene and like Texas country and stuff and. But I just remember, like, a moment, like, laying in bed, checking Twitter and stuff, and people were like, come to Texas, come to Texas. And, I, and that was, like, still not even on my list of things that we could ever accomplish. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, Texas? Like, yeah. what? And our manager at the time was like, dude, y'all got fans in Texas. Like, y'all should probably try that. And I was like, what? Yeah. Like, people, people, like, considered us a part of this little thing over here, and then a lot of people still considered us here, and we were like, dude, this is, like, kind of a unique place to be tandem here like we need to take advantage of it you know not in like a bad way but it's like how do we keep riding that and like, yeah well it's interesting because it's not geographic like right. I, I experienced the same thing like it's it's very normal for tyler childers for instance or any of those bluegrass guys out of appalachia to be thrown in with the texas guys although geographically it has nothing in common exactly. yes, i think it's more exactly. corporate versus independent is yeah kind of how people view it no right. i i 100 percent, and i envied a lot of the Texas guys. One from a touring perspective because like if Texas puts on for their own, so yeah. they're they're start <laughs> yes. they're there's one, they can play a state and they can play seventy different towns in it <laughs> and, and, yeah, and tour just Texas and, and and make some money and build a fan base. So but not only that, it's like they're not tainted with the whole I live in Nashville and I listen to so many perspectives. Like a guy like Co Wetzel like, he, I mean, a good buddy of ours, but it's like, he was just putting out the music he wants to put out. Right. There was no one being like, God, it's not a hit, or like, whatever. It's just like... Yeah, no one was in his right. ear saying like, no, nah, you should put, and, let's write better songs. And, and it's not <laughs> like this like conglomerate where it's like, oh, Nashville's got their way. It's like, all these guys in Texas, they live in the towns they grew up in, and they have a buddy with the studio, and they mm-hmm. go in and cut a record. And that's the beauty of it, and that's why those records like sound more interesting, because it's not... Hey, the same studio band that played with you know on this Tim McGraw record played on the Dustin Lynch and Michael Ray record. Just insert different vocals on it. And yeah, and like whether the critically acclaimed will like listen to the record and be like the quality's there. They would never like. It's like doesn't matter. Who would yeah. do that? Yeah, would get on the internet and, yeah. and yeah. review stuff yeah. like you that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like just doesn't matter. It's like if people are like it, it's like a, a screw your critically acclaimed opinion because but people he, are coming. Here's the thing though. I, you know, I, I interact with a bunch of different people, and I do think that there is there is a trade-off that I think a lot of people in Texas aren't honest about, which is some people want the fame that only comes by playing the game, that only comes by, like, yeah, you are going to put your engagement in People Magazine, and you are, like, there is a level of that, and I do think it's, it's interesting there are some Texas, I think 95% of people are cool with man, I'm making a living for myself and my family and yeah. I'm touring. And there are some people that there is a chip on the shoulder of like, uh, they resent the Nashville game, but they yeah. also want what comes from it. Well, see, there's been an evolution though in Texas. Like when I grew when I was in college, I was listening to Josh Abbott band, Wade Bowen, mm-hmm. Case Donahue and all these guys. And there was like a hatred for Nashville. Yeah. Like there was yeah. like an, it was like anti, I ain't ever signing, nah, 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 like all this. I'd rather and, be a fence post than yeah. Texas. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And now, and those dudes were the biggest, baddest, some bitches in Texas. 
And now you got guys like Coe Wetzel, Colby Cooper, and all these dudes that are like, I want a deal. What do you mean? Like, I want yeah. I want a yeah. record deal today. I want to get out of t- I want to be yeah. as big as I am in Texas everywhere. Right. They were like, like Whiskey Myers, like, they don't have a deal, but it's like, they were they they were like, I want to go away from Texas. Like, I want to be bigger than Texas. That's the new mindset. And, like, it's kind of interesting because, like, I feel like if I were Josh Abbott or Casey Donahue or whatever at the time, I'd be like, damn, like, Maybe, you know, maybe I wonder if they think that. Like, maybe mm-hmm. we should have bridged that gap, or I don't know. I think also too is like the accessibility wasn't there too. That's also that. true because yeah. I mean there streaming. wasn't streaming. Yeah, streaming. Yeah. There wasn't. It was just like for you're buying, you're still buying records, clicking the songs you like on iTunes, yes. and then streaming you know, bridged the gap. I yeah. think for yeah. for from That's Nashville to Texas, yeah. and, and now you can go find whatever you want, like regardless of where you live. So that yeah. like geographical yeah. thing is kind of fa- like don't get me wrong, Texas still puts on for Texas. Oh yeah, always. and they are very like, and they put on for us. Yeah, so shout out to yeah. Texas. So, like, <laughs> yeah, but it's it's one of those things like they're very guarded with what they like, and that's the reason why like. A lot of these people from Nashville, they're only they're only going to play the big cities, and it's like they play the big four. They play Houston, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth yeah. area, but they don't go into these little small towns like we do, and like mm-hmm. and people show up are these college towns that are like these iconic rooms for Texas artists, and so that's one thing we're blessed with is because like Texas just kind of. Put it on, put put us on there, and it's kind of like just because of association. You know, you go tour with Coe Wetzel, you go tour with Cody Johnson. You know, you know all these different guys, and then we took Coe to the southeast before Coe was what he is. And it's like I remember going up to Birmingham, and he opened for us, and we just played with him in Texas. He's this huge guy, and then we, he comes to Birmingham, and no one knew what he was. Now he can sell twice as many tickets. In <laughs> yeah, I was about to say he's worth more in every market in the country yeah. than we are. I mean, and so, it's crazy. but it's just cool to see that. But yeah, that Texas thing is it's it's an interesting thing. Yeah, yeah, it's an amazing yeah. beast. But we all are. Uh, let me. I'm gonna restart this so it yeah, doesn't have fine. to restart. But one of the things that's interesting about you guys though is like you stayed in Nashville, and I was telling you before we started filming, like you do something that I think I'd be very bad at, and I relate to you in a lot of senses because I. I flirt with like the mainstream. I yes, do cover totally. pop country. Yeah. I'm not being, you know, totally just like, hey, I'm only talking about Cody Jenks on this channel. Right. Like I am reviewing Dan and Shay too. But at the same time, like I don't want to move to Nashville. I don't want to work yeah. for Apple Music. I don't want to do that. And so I sometimes I'm like, what am I doing? And and y'all are still in Nashville. Oh, I mean, you're and, right there. Yeah, like we and we all always have moments like that. It's like. When you're creating something that you believe in, like you trust and and know the potential of, it's like you're always gonna have days where you're like, damn, like I wonder what happened if we did sign a deal. Yeah, I wonder. I hope no, I would never. I'll never know. But yeah. like, I'm sitting here because we did it, and it's like I don't know. Maybe will we one day? I have no idea. Yeah, and it's just like yeah, you just don't know, and it's you just gotta would, trust your gut. What the main reason, Gray, that we're still in Nashville is for touring sense. Nashville is so centrally located yeah. for where we mostly play. So you, we're we're up in the Midwest. We're up in you know uh, up in the Northeast. We come down here and, and play a lot of the South and Texas. So it's convenient to tour because in Mobile, Alabama, you're at the bottom of the country. So yeah. everywhere is far. Well, and there's that infrastructure. I, I mean, I've, I've right. been there with friends when it's like, oh shoot, we need yeah. a whole other two boxes of merch. Yeah, yeah. and they, someone there's some company that presses yeah, shirts that can do it yeah. in one day. Or incre- incredible musicians who moved into town to play in a band. Yeah, like convenient, but pure convenience. It's like your management's there, your PR team, everyone's there. If you have to do an interview, it's there. Like it's all there. You know. What do people misunderstand about Nashville? Like maybe think my audience uh, and like someone like me that kind of looks at it from the outside and maybe does have some frustration of like, oh, they're just churning out Luke Bryan. I'll I'll tell one. And I like Luke. Yeah. Luke's new record. Yeah, but uh, (laughs) I will say the biggest thing is just because you're in the who's who of Nashville, you ain't shit everywhere else. And so it's like there's a lot of these people who come in and they go to losers or they go to whatever every night and they know everybody and they and which they, which feels valuable yeah. in the moment like you're like but it, oh, I'm getting to know everybody yeah. I'm in the circle but those people you're getting to know don't buy music and so it's like I don't I personally we're at the point I don't even go out in that I mean neither does he but it's kind of like all we care about is the people who are consuming it. Like, I don't, like, and so... Well, and, what, what's more important? Right, you know? and so like, <laughs> I would say that's one of the main things is, like, yeah, getting to town and finding people that are like-minded in you, they like to write the kind of same things. And we, we still kind of have our close-knit guys that we kind of oh, get sure. up with and, and write with. And 
now we're at that point. Those are the only people we care about writing with. I don't really care about venturing out anymore because it's just kind of like we have what we like. And so, like, these people get what we're doing, and we like the product we get. So, Yeah, I think I think one thing is, like, a lot of artists assume – that this is the 70s and, and it's like you you just move to town and you're just going to meet that dude and he's just going to throw you on the radio and your life's going to be different forever and it's just not like that anymore it's like yeah you do have the Luke Holmes of the world who it, he could move to town got turned down for years busted his ass finally did get a chance to get a record deal on a radio and look what happens yeah. but that ain't that ain't practical like that's not what reality is like Luke Holmes is about to be the next Garth Brooks, if right. not bigger. Like, yeah. the, the, the odds of that happening are slim to none, in my opinion. What I, my point is, it's like, we, if you move to Nashville, you still got to work. You still yeah. got to go tour. You still got to do the stuff. And a lot of people think that you're just going to get it handed to you, or, or you think that if you sign with this manager, then you're going to be blown up because of it. And it just doesn't, it's just not how it works. So interesting. It almost sounds like what you're saying is, and correct me if this is an incorrect summation, like it's easy to get kind of into the illusion that the main important audience is your peers in Nashville and lose sight of kind of the outside Absolutely. world. People talk about DC like that. Like yeah. you go to Congress ready to yeah. represent your constituents and yeah, sure. soon enough the main people you're trying to please are the other Congress people. And Which is kind of opposite in yeah. my opinion of yeah. like Nashville because like, I mean, yeah, you, there's a little bit of give and take in everything. You know, there's sure there's probably people in town you could please it more than others, but it's like at the end of the day, if you're not pleasing yourself and your fans, then you're probably going to be unhappy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. It's going to be difficult. I, I would say at a base level too, I mean, if you're like uh, another misconception, it's like don't get a gig on Broadway. Here's that's an easy one. Like don't go downtown and start playing on Broadway four nights, five nights a week, blow out your vocal cords, and you get stuck there because it's a job. And so now you're just worried about playing on Broadway at Tootsie's, you know, five nights a week. I would say too, like to add to that, it's like it's okay to do that if you need money. Like I, obviously, but like it's easy to get stuck there, and that's the same type of thing we were talking about in the beginning of being like the cover band in the college town. Like, there's just no future there. Yeah. No one gets signed off of Broadway. Yeah. No A&R guys drinking a beer on Broadway. Okay. Like, this yeah. dude, this is the guy. I just think if you're trying to do music for a career, you got to get a, uh, a point, or you got to get some kind of, there so, has to be some sort of income, and that income needs to be just enough to live, and you need to focus all your time right. on what you want to do. Yeah, and, and it's rare to become famous singing other people's songs. Too. Right. So it's, like, it's like, yeah, I mean, we get mad at us for that, but it's true. Yeah. What's the, Okay, just one more beat on that question. What's like a more hopeful uh, misunderstanding that, that like, what is like a piece of hate that people give towards Nashville that you're like, but that's not actually true because like y'all have a creative community in town and is yeah, there like absolutely. a, what's like the flip side to kind of the doubters of? I mean, I think a lot of, Nashville naysayers, and I've been one. I've, when I was in college, you know, I was like, "Oh, Nashville is where you go if you sell out." And all this stuff. And it's like, dude, there's still, there's still, there's still musicians that have deals that make phenomenal music. Yeah, there's still musicians in town that have pub deals or whatever. It's like they're in the cog of the system that make phenomenal music. Mm-hmm. And that, and like that's one great thing about Nashville is like you can still come and be talented and creative and collaborate with the right team and setting and and be amazing and great yeah, and I, make unique music. I heard Caitlin Smith say in an interview once that she thought it was so weird that there was an entire city where like a lot a giant percentage of the city moved there to create something. Yeah, it's it's quite yeah. incredible actually if you think about it like that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's insane. <laughs> I don't really know. I mean, besides what he said, I don't know if I have anything to yeah. add to that, really. Um, yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, you're also talking to guys that, you know, I don't, I mean, I love Nashville or, or I love the community that it brings and, you know, finding people who are creative and like minded and that sort of thing. But, like, business size, like, I think, like, you know, impressing suits or doing stuff like that like i don't i don't have anything good to say i might as well not say anything to be honest well yeah i mean also to note like 
our way isn't the only way. Yeah. Like it's it's also not the right way, if you want to call it that. It's just yeah. right for us. Like yeah. if I was to go say, hey man, like I'm a huge fan of Luke Holmes. I'm gonna we're, let's go do everything he did. All right, let's let's go write with the same writers. Let's write with let's sign with Cappy as manager. Let's mm-hmm. sign with the same booking agent. Everything. Let's go do that. It don't mean anything. It's yeah. it, it does not guarantee you anything. Yeah. So it's like you still got to find your own way. I, I think a positive too that so people could reflect on. I here's one for it, but like okay, like the thing like Luke Combs, uh, you get pitched that like in a meeting. They're like, well, do you want to play arenas? And I was like, well, the reality of that is very slim. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It's they don't like, like to hear that. It's, it's, like, it's, what do you it's mean? like, dude, if you're happy, if you want to play music and make a living, and you, and you play clubs and people come and enjoy it, like. That should be enough. Like so, right. like, like I think a lot of times that aspiration to be like, well, I will do whatever it takes yeah, to true. get to the stadiums, and it might not happen. That's a sad life, mm-hmm. you know. And so it's just kind of like, there's just stuff we, we just realize as we're getting older. There's just stuff I'm not willing to do. Yeah. And like I don't really care. Like there's right. there's stuff we're not willing to do yeah. to become famous. Yeah. I like and honestly, like this sounds jaded or whatever, but I don't really care about being famous. I just want people to like our music yeah. and more people to come to shows. That's literally baseline it. Yeah, being famous isn't enticing. It's just like the more people come to shows, the more fun it is. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean that's that's really it. Like I I love life, and, and Charlie does too, and we're both super content with where we are. Yeah. But it's also, like, there's that balance. It's I think it's a dual threat because, like, I'm content, but we're also driven. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I, I want to keep it going. Inevitably, we're going to want to grow it. Right. And so, it, and then the more we've just, you know, done less and less with Nashville, the cog, the more I'm happy, to mm-hmm. be honest. And so, like, the more we're just taking the reins and going in the studio with, with our band, not... You know, just little things like writing, you know, all the songs just from us writing albums, not just writing to write. It's like, no, nah, we're writing with the intent of this is an album or whatever. And so it's kind of like backwards of what everyone tells you. It's like, no, you need to write 300 songs. And there's, you know, a, there's 2, a hours. There's, yeah, it's got to be a hit in there. It's like, no, nah, if you just want to say something and, and you're writing to, you know, a point or whatever this what this record is leading to, like, I would rather just, you know, sit right with Charlie and I don't really care about the other stuff. Yeah, playing 2,000 cap rooms is pretty tight. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Like, you, you don't I have always to think play, about yeah. that in the pop world, someone like Sarah Bareilles. Yeah. Um, who wouldn't want her career? Yeah. Of like, right. every yeah, five absolutely. years, she has like some major top 10 national hit. Yeah. Otherwise, she just like pulls up with her piano and plays to a crowd of 3,000 anywhere she goes. Right. Like, what <laughs> is... You know, you know to what me, saying? like, there's really nothing... I mean, odds-wise, it's like, <laughs> there's... That's... That's it. Like that's yeah. making it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like make, playing arenas as a headliner is. <laughs> Dude, just, slim. Like, yeah. <laughs> just it, whatever. Waking up and you have arrived to that definition of success, and then doing whatever you want is an awesome thing. That's something that I often want to tell people because yeah. some people reach out to me yeah. and say like, "Hey, I'm working a regular job. I want to play music for a living." And uh, there, there's this. I kind of have come to see over time there is this like gut check that needs to happen in a person first where it's like, what do you really want? Yeah, absolutely. Are you going to be content um, if you do, if you can actually make a living? What if you made the same amount you make in your office job right now, um, but you were playing music? Would you be happy or do you want the glamour or do you want, you know, and I think a lot of people have to well I think people figure that out a lot of times like it's not the initial like gut check they're always it's always just like I want to try this you know and then Mm -hmm. you find out two or three years later of like oh wait like how far deep into this do I want to be like how then you I think you kind of at least for us like at the beginning like I said it's always stadiums arenas like I (laughs) I grew up listening to Garth Brooks and like being like this is the cool this that's the coolest thing in the world and and do I think we're talented enough and and smart enough and driven enough and could do that yeah i think we could but it's like you still have to have tangible reality like goals it's like if you're just going off the odds it probably won't happen but so let's make the best of what we can make the best soup you can with the ingredients you got (laughs) you know what i'm saying like uh uh, there's like that tiktok meme right now good Good soup soup. yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's what you gotta do good soup Okay, I want to play like a, not a game. I want to talk about kind of like some tips that I would give as someone that's been in the media that now is weirdly in new media, even though I tried to quit, um, of kind of what I see 
for young artists and like up and coming independent artists. A lot of people reach out to me and want advice totally. and I kind of have my thoughts on things. And so I want you guys to be my prism through which they are labeled true or false okay, sure. or like yeah. this yeah. is good advice or bad advice. I'm kind of interested about this because we might even disagree on some of these. Yeah. It'd be cool. Yeah. It'd be fine with yeah, me if you yeah. do. Let's try it. My main thing that I always want to tell people when they say, Hey, could you cover this song? And it'll be someone with a couple hundred followers on Instagram. Will you include this in your next review video? And I don't say, I usually don't respond or say no, but I want to just grab someone and be like, stop worrying about coverage. Stop trying to get people to write about you. Just go be cool. Um, and journalists want to chase the thing that is cool. Um, journalists like to think, and I was one of them, that they are taste makers, but really they are taste responders. And if there's yeah. like, if Zach Bryan is happening, people are going to find a way to write about Zach Bryan. And so I always want to just tell people, stop worrying about this. Stop spending your time writing the emails to press and trying to garner coverage for yourself. Don't hire a publicity firm um, when you are one EP in. Right. Just go release your stuff and be cool. That's like my broad, I guess, first thesis. Yeah, I mean, off rip, um, this is something that Luke Laird told us a long time ago in the in a writer's room one day, and he was just like, man, like, if you're an artist, and I, and I believe this, by the way, like, to this day, but it's like, make the best music you can, and if it's dope, people will find you. Like, that's simple as that. Like, it's like, yeah, you can always strive on getting better, and it's like, make the music you think people want to hear, or like... That's not good advice to me. It's like, no, you should truly just make the best product that you can. With physically possible, yeah. with the funds you have and, and with the talent that you have. And if it's dope, Grady Smith will find you. Like, you don't need people blowing up your DMs to be like... It, it, honestly, if people were blowing up my DMs about someone telling me to, like, shout them out on Instagram, basically, I, I would be like... I would kind of, like, be like, ah, now nah, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm I mean, saying? I, I, I totally agree. Like... It's just, yeah, I don't know. I'm reaching out to people, like, and that's something we've never really done. Like, we, we're just, like I said, keep your head down. We feel weird about it, yeah, honestly. Yeah, like, people people will find it. Like, you found it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, it wasn't like, we were like, hey, Grady, like, come. Please, yeah, please. Please just give our VP a chance or whatever. So, it's it's just, that. I mean, it is. If, if it's cool, people will find it. Yeah. yeah. Just plain and simple. If, I don't want that to sound arrogant either because it's just like, it doesn't happen for everybody. Like well, it and just, you're not, it's not like you're one year into this. Right. You know, you know it doesn't totally. sound arrogant to me. You're totally. Like many but it's years just into like, this. They, like it's going back to the odds thing. I mean, try it. Try to be a musician, bro. Like it's not easy and, it, and, it, and you're, you're probably going to fail. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but like it, we just got lucky, I guess. Yeah. I mean, so y'all have never done that. You've never, you've never, uh, did you, did you get publicity right off the bat and be like, was that part of your creative nation? We had some publicity like from a, like a, PR campaign mm -hmm. and something like you know you saw the early like Rolling Stone the Billboard like mm -hmm. something that we did Billboard chart our EP in the in the early days but it was like you know a lot of that stuff I feel like wasn't super organic you know compared to what we get now I would say is is entirely organic honestly mm -hmm. yeah I mean I mean and honestly looks like that are kind of just for shows. It's it's for it's for promoters to be yeah. like, oh, Rolling Stone people and you know who the, the, the tasting the taste it, of country it's music. It's good to have current things. editorial about right. you. You know, what but I mean? I mean, I'm not you know tooting your horn, but it's like people are gonna listen to what Grady talks about more than Taste of Country because, and I'm not knocking that they they cover us too, but it's like they cover everybody. And so it's like, you don't cut, like, you're a tastemaker in that sense, because it's like, you're picking and choosing what you want to talk about. So, yeah, but, and, and to, to, that's a compliment I would say to you, because if people are asking you to do it, it's different because they know that your fan base trusts you mm -hmm. to only talk about shit that's cool or yeah. shit Or shit you, you want to talk about. Like. And I don't, I'm not it. offended by people yeah. when they reach out and, and say that. I just want to redirect where I'm like, I'm actually not the person whose approval yeah. you need because I don't pay your bills at the end yeah. of the day. Like yeah. there are people out there totally. that want to love you and yeah, like, sure. uh, just and they, they won't until you put yourself out there. Yeah. You know? I, and we still have people hit us up daily. Like it's like, <laughs> dude, if you could just take a second and listen to our song <laughs> and like, we'll straight up just say back to him like, Hey man, I'm sure it's great, but us listening to this 
is not going to do anything for you. Even us posting about it, it's not going to do that. Nothing. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to do anything unless it's really great. Right. And so, and I'll listen to. And it. if it was really great, we have our thumb on the needle. We'd have, we'd have heard it. Yeah. And, and so that's one of those things too. It's like I think there's a reality check, and I mean, the, I'm I I tend sometimes to come off like very very like glass half empty guy, and he's got to <laughs> he's got to keep that. Full. I'm the full guy. Yeah. <laughs> but like honestly, it's like you need that gut check thing you're talking about. It's like. Dude, if you're trying to be in music and if it, it's just your mom, your dad, and your best friends telling you to go chase after this because you're really good and no one else is, I don't know if you should be chasing <laughs> that. To, I, I'm just, no, I'm just being honest. Like, that, yeah. like it's like, dude, don't you know? Go off of what people who really love you as a person, yeah, like who would never tell you the truth, <laughs> like yeah, don't do that. Exactly. Like that's just, and so. That's that's one of the things like we saw that change when it was like an example portrait angel. That was the first time in my life like strangers that I'd never met was like this song. I, we love love this song, mm-hmm. and, and, right. and we're like what? And, and so that was at first instead of just like our buddies who you know who we knew were gonna shout it yeah. out even so, if they liked it or not. Right. Like, and so like that's the thing where it's like okay I'm on to something here. Yeah. And so let's just keep riding this. Let's just keep giving these people product and hope they like it. It's so it is so hard. I really relate to what. You're saying there because it's so hard to keep your head about you. Um, at, even as a YouTuber, yeah, you have a video that blows up and like it's a strange public job. So all your friends, all your family, they have advice oh, yeah. about like, oh, I think everyone would love if you oh, did. You know, my parents yeah, and my yeah. dad's friends love them, but they're always be like, people would love if you covered, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, this band from the '70s that I loved. And I'm like, they really wouldn't. My audience is mostly like 18 <laughs> to 34. Like they have yeah. no idea who that is. <laughs> yeah, um, and. And, and they and, obviously don't understand YouTube. Right? But you gotta <laughs> learn to trust. You're like, no, I know my numbers. Like, I know that I know Co Wetzel is a better use of my time to Absolutely. cover. And, and it is. It's just a weird thing where you gotta learn that muscle. Okay. Yeah. Next thought is uh, my second piece of advice: get videos of yourself singing on the internet. 100%. I mean, absolutely. Dude. That's how we started. The social media, baby. Yeah. I, I mean, had, where, I mean, where would we be without it right now? We did, no our first year, we did this thing when we started. It was called Muscadine Mondays. And I had a Nikon camera that I bought. See, this is another thing, too. I was out shooting uh, before Charlie moved up. I was out with guys like Ray Fulcher. I don't know that. And I was filming edit, like uh, our recap videos. Just because I was just like... I need I need some money, need something to do, and like it's just the hustle, and so just figuring something out. But uh, God, I don't. God, I mean, what is do this you setup think? worse or better than yours? Oh, it's definitely the setup's better. Great. Yeah, yeah. No, it's <laughs> Honestly, I would say that like not just sitting on the toilet and like because you think your acoustics in your bathroom sound good, yeah, like, they don't. Yeah, <laughs> so don't do that anymore. But um, but no, we we literally did every Monday. We just did a cover. We got a cheat code because we could sing harmonies. So it's just kind of like cheating. Yeah. It's so we would it. It was before iPhones could film like they did, mm-hmm. and like in 4K. Right, and so we just had good looking that. It was a six hundred dollar investment with a little road mic on top of mm-hmm. it, and all we did was just sing courses of cover. And but we it's saw- so important because when you're into a new artist, and I like I hear, oh my gosh, I like that one song that auto played on Spotify. Yeah. If I can't find a video of you on YouTube or somewhere, then you assume you're like, yeah, probably not legit. Like, what is it? Yeah, I just want, I'm curious. I'm like, what do they sound like live? What do they look like? What are their mannerisms? I think it's just like a natural thing in the age of the internet to want to go see. And when there's no video, I'm like, do they ever sing live? Do they play shows? Do they do anything? Yeah. It's um, I don't like bands until I see them live, to be honest. <laughs> well, I think it's not proper to judge a band until you see them live. Yeah. Like, it's like, I mean, it's just so much harder to convey the message live. Like, in, in the studio, like, mm-hmm. you can just fake so much shit. Yeah. Like, it's just so easy to be like, oh, it, it didn't sound good, we'll just tune it right up. Like, it's like, yeah. go see a band live before you, but, but also before you, like, hate or like them. Like, you, I think you should just go t- spend the money and see them. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, do you just learn a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, I always just want to, I think people, because cause I, I talk to a lot of people that, you know, they've spent thousands of dollars sometimes being oh, like, yeah. I'm going to get a photo shoot done for my album booklet. I'm going to make a $5,000 music video and spend all of my savings on it. And I'm always just like, I don't think it's even that complicated. No. Like, no. you got a phone. Especially you got a voice. in just, the TikTok era. Yes, like it's it like TikTok. We had this conversation the other day. We were like, hey, let's make the TikTok quality go down. 
Like, let's make the videos with our iPhone, like, like a hundred percent. We don't want to do it on that. Mm -hmm. Like, why would we do that? Yeah. yeah. People want it to feel like someone's holding it with their hand. Uh -huh. You know, they don't want to feel like you sat and changed your outfit and, and did it in front of this sick backdrop. And it's like, man, no, nah, dude, just raw, real, like, that's what people want. Yeah. So, I, I mean, look, Zach Bryan, dude, guy's dripping sweat on the back porch, you know, singing his <laughs> songs. And it's, why do people like it? Because he sounds Also good. feeding them original content. Right. Like, so you know, I, I, would, I would even say, like, the cover thing is, like, even harder now just because... Not just everybody was doing it five years ago when we came up, but like now because of you know twelve year olds have an iPhone, like there's three thousand percent more people putting up covers of Friends in Low Places yeah. than there were five years ago. Well, so I mean like, now you don't even have to sing them, you know, because it's like a lot of people like I I I'm a t I I get TikTok, but I'm sort of a TikTok hater. I know um, I, I you were literally your little clip making fun of people singing in their car. Yeah. Was no, going was to be in my last TikTok video, and I yeah. was like, I don't want to seem like a dick right before I try and get them to come on the channel. Yeah. But <laughs> no. I put the question here, and I look up. Put the question here, and I look up. And then I lip sing the words in my own songs, because if people really heard how I sang, they wouldn't like the song at all. Then I throw my girlfriend in the picture, and she's crying to the song that I just wrote, and now I'm famous. The thing about us is, like, the people like I respect and look up to, and the music that I love, those guys are not doing that. Like, they don't do the, hey, let's lip sync to a song or whatever. And that's just the world we live in now, and I get it. Yeah, I kind of, I have a yeah. bunch, to, I listen to y'all on Whiskey Rift talk about yeah. this, and yeah. I was like, oh, I have such a different perspective on it than yeah. them, where I'm like, I don't know, it's the pandemic. There were kids that had cover bands for years. Yeah. And, uh, like, totally. they're not playing at a frat party. Why not? They just had a sing video go viral. Thing? Like, I, I see it from both sides. Yeah, you know? I, no, I get it. I get why it works. It's just like, <laughs> I'm not the consumer for that. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Like, it's 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 whatever. And, like, I, you know, we, we can all have different opinions on it. But it's just like, but nowadays, I mean, people can even do that. It's like, hey, we went and recorded a demo of this song we wrote last week. And it's in key. And let me just put it in my car, add my girlfriend in it, and I'll say, <laughs> tell everyone it's about her and make it look like she hasn't heard it before, which right. I bet she's I, heard That's it. the thing oh, I always yeah, say. Yeah, it's the people, cringy. People need a bullshit meter on TikTok when they're yeah. like, the, pr the husband and wife prank channels make me want to die. Oh, yeah. man. I would, I would argue that like 80% of people on TikTok are being finessed, 100%. <laughs> like 20% so like of it is actually like raw, you know? But I mean, okay, here, here's like a confession. I don't think I had listened to Porch Swing Angel till Warren uh, Zader's covered it so many times. Don't you put on that makeup. And I was like, oh, that's a Muscat Iron Bloodline song? Yeah. I didn't find you that way. I found yeah. you with uh, uh, Moving On, is that the name of the yeah. EP? Yeah. Um, with the truck on the cover and mm -hmm. then Burn Up at Both Ends. And yeah. I, that Burn Up at Both Ends is really when I like heard you again but yeah. then Porch Swing Angel like came back around like a boomerang and I'm yeah. like oh that's their most known song yeah um, yeah and they like, I mean I mean that, but that's also a part of TikTok that's like thanks guys like, yeah that's sick. But, uh, like, but also Warren's Iron was singing it you know what I'm saying like he wasn't yes. he wasn't like just lip singing something yeah and so like I mean he's got a crazy voice yeah he does he could, he could sing he hits I mean and he kind of made it his own thing like he did he kind of <laughs> like, like made it his, his own ball! yeah <laughs> Swing, I mean, I mean he, that's he, what he did. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, but he could just nail the note, and it's <laughs> yeah. just like he he played to his strong suits. Yeah, he's like the guy's got a big, powerful voice. Here, and he put a out a cover EP. Also, yeah. it was like, hey, I guess. and he's killing. Like he's yeah. on. I, like I'll be going through TikTok and YouTube and stuff, and I gotta like mute him because I see him so much. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, like, and I'm not like, even like, knocking it because yeah. it's like because he sounds good and people like it. So yeah, it's just like I like, and I think his original stuff's doing. Like I like Ride the Lightning quite a bit. Uh huh. Okay, so next piece of advice, and there you go. That is like a perfect conclusion to get videos of yourself singing on the internet. Yeah, it's not going to hurt at all. <laughs> yeah. um, can only help. Okay, uh, next one is don't think, it, well, it's kind of twofold. Play live and stop thinking that streaming will pay for your life. Okay, I've got some interesting opinions on this. You want me to tackle this one first? Sure. I mean, playing live at first... Okay, if I if I get a gig down the street, right, I, and it's I'm gonna make a hundred bucks. I'm probably gonna make a hundred bucks playing that acoustic gig way quicker than if I put out a single. I'm talking about the guy who has like just no, starting, just, just starting. starting. Yeah, yeah. So it'll take me a long time to get to a hundred bucks on streaming. And so like I would say at first, like you got to create. God, I don't know because like it it can work both ways. 
and I can only go from what we did. And like we just got five years of reps playing live mm -hmm. before we even put out music together. And so, and then once we did that, we Which, knew, yeah, you could argue like it's wasted time financially, but it like is. you, it, it's the 10,000 hours thing. Like yeah. you're learning, like the stuff that I learned and we learned in college bars, like we, we implement now, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, so that was not like wasted time. Yeah. But God, I don't know. Cause I mean, nowadays, like I said, with TikTok, a guy can just like, you know, put out a song and it goes viral and then there's a demand for it and people are buying that. That's a great thought because like YouTube and TikTok are going to be different than Apple Music and Spotify. Mm -hmm. I guess I was thinking more in the digital streaming platform for musicians, but you're right because you guys are big on YouTube and like have always, I think, like put work into your music yeah. videos and stuff. And yeah, I'm hearing what you're saying there. I, well, think, I think there's a huge misconception and this is something that's taught by like the industry of like, get your record deal and get your number one hit because then this is where you win on the road. You are the one that's going to make all the money over here. But that's that's true. That's also true. But where a lot of people don't understand this, a lot of natural artists, like people we know don't understand this, is that there's money to be made on YouTube, a lot of it. They don't even know. Like there's people that are literally like, wait, you can monetize YouTube? Didn't even know that. There's, <laughs> and there's a lot of money to be made streaming. Mm -hmm. Especially when you own your your masters. Okay. I mean, I mean, M more we than make like as more a we make more money on music than we do on the road. Wow. That is wild to hear because you it well, it doesn't it doesn't happen as much. You know what? Right. Like, and it it may happen for a guy. Say if you know a bigger act. Say if you know Riley Green owned all of his masters. I'm not gonna say we're gonna you know I don't know he might make more on that than he would on the road. I really don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'd have but, to see uh, it obviously, but but yeah, I mean that's that's where you win in our situation. It's just because we kind of have all of our there's no timeline. We could drop something tomorrow, and it, there's no one we have to really kind of run it by. So it's literally just like hey, I mean we over the pandemic. Uh, our 2020, let's just say, we put out 30 songs, you know, of just like little projects. We even like recorded in closets and did the quarantine work tapes and that kind of thing. And like all these little cheap things that like, you know, we're just like, okay, we just got to feed something. Mm -hmm. And and that's all it was. It's really just creating that catalog. And it's not worrying about, man, is this song going to be a hit? Is this yeah. going to get picked up everywhere? It's like, no, I just keep feeding the beast. And I promise you, you'll look back and be like, dang, those 30 songs you put out c collected a lot of streams. Yeah, and, oh, and, yeah. and, and there's a million ways to do it. But yeah. I mean, this is just how we know. And yeah. it's just our model. It's yeah. cool, though, because like, I guess why I wrote that assumption was I hear from a lot of... I just see it a lot online. People will post something like, hey... I'm an independent artist and like I only made $11 in the last year from streaming receipts and I have a really different opinion than most peers that I see in media on this front where I just think economically there's a supply and demand reality to the world and I'm like the supply of music is at a shocking level. Oh, high level insanity. and I'm like maybe it is worth a little less I'm not saying that with words that your individual perspective and the music coming out of your mouth and out of your fingers is not valuable but in an economic sense maybe it is worth a little less when there's this much of it and people shouldn't expect that you know it's going to be you're going to make a living just because your quality is that of someone who could make a living and yeah, so it's yeah. a it's a tough, it, it's a weird thing where I'm like, people got to, I think for, yeah, kind of like what you said, maybe the people in that perspective where the streaming numbers are low should not rely on it in the beginning, but they, yeah. it compounds. Uh, yeah, definitely not. But continue to invest in yourself, yeah. obviously. Man, I have a bunch of, I had a bunch of those prepared, but I feel like, hey, you're going to have to like get to your show and eat dinner yeah. at some point, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> as am I, yeah. but uh I, yeah, I had, I was just going to get on my soapbox of exclusives because I yeah. get angry at, um, I don't like exclusive premieres and yeah. I'm not trying to make more enemies in, in media or anything, yeah. but sometimes bands give an outlet an exclusive for no other reason than to get a quote that their PR can use. Yeah. And you go the next day to their YouTube channel and it got like 150 views after premiering on a big website right. and... I feel like it's a little... I often experience it as like kind of a slap in the face to the fans yeah. where I'm like, well, we could have blown up your video oh, if you given it to us, but you gave it to them. And now I don't want to link to this where someone's going to have to then click into to the video. click four different things. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was just going to be my last uh, 
I'll always die on that hill, though. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I've tried it. it before, and it's yeah. not good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it messes up your algorithm, because yeah. you're like, that, those first 24 hours of traffic matter quite a bit, yeah, uh, in terms of YouTube deciding whether or not they're going to push your video further. I think I, we always say, like, there's a there's a level of, like, annoyance that you can only do so much to your fans, you know? like, mm -hmm. And it's like, we've towed the line of, like, in our opinion of, like, we're annoying them. Like, why, why don't we just let them find it? You know, it's like, let's just put it out and let it breathe and live. And, okay, but here's know. the flip side that I actually think more people, especially in the singer-songwriter world, struggle with. And it's the opposite of that. They're so scared to annoy their fans. They're sensitive. They're, and they want to be cool. They want to like, be cool. Yeah. They love Isbol and Childers. And they are cool. And they did write beautiful music. And they, I, I talk to so many people that are up in their head and almost feel guilty about promoting themselves. And they're like, well, I already said the album was out, and I don't yeah, want to like weird. annoy people. But you got to be able to. And there's still a certain form. amount of like advertising that's worth. Like, <laughs> was that was that like easy for y'all to do always, or did you have to kind of learn how to? I believe that we we tow a great line of like, yeah, like sure, it'd be cool to be Tyler Childers and never have to be on social media ever, and everyone just blows up your music all the time, and it just doesn't matter. But like, also, like, there's like the flip side of that where it's like you're begging people to listen to it, and I would rather be in the middle because, like, first of all, that's just who we are. Like, we're gonna, we're we are like we grew up with phones. Like, we're gonna tell people what we're up to every now and then. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. it's like it just yeah. is what it is. We just do our organic thing. We don't try to like our, make people listen. Our, you know? our kind of thing we've kind of gone off is like with posting and that kind of stuff is like unless we have something. Important to say. <laughs> You've leaned so far over. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Here's the <laughs> sorry, I'll get close. It's like, uh, unless you have something important to say, or unless you have something that's funny, that's or it's it's like a great picture or whatever, it's like there's no need to share just yeah, nothing. Don't post just a post. Yeah, yeah, and that's what a lot of these like PR firms and stuff where they're just like, oh, we need, you know, we need seven posts a week, Let's pump and the, you know, we need the, hashtag the stories and stuff. We, and it's like, no, just like. If you got something interesting to say, if you're not doing anything interesting, they definitely don't care. And so, like, you, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying, though? I do, I but, do. And so it's like, I think, like Charlie said, it's a fine line of, of doing that. And I, like I said, we tell it, I feel pretty well. And honestly, like, we don't like to be on our phones all the time. All yeah. right? Especially, like, at a consumer point. Like, yeah, we might, you know, watch something on. Stare at yeah, our phone all day, obviously, because yeah. everyone does. But, yeah, but <laughs> it, it, I do think it's a, there's a lot. There's a certain sure. amount of advertising. Like, I don't really yeah. feel like telling people yeah. all what I'm doing all day. Yeah. yeah. So last question, and then I'm going to have you take off your, your like, business caps and go yeah. put on your artist cap for yeah. a sec. Uh, but if you are up and coming, who's the first person outside of yourself that you think is a good investment of like your time and money? Is it an agent? Is it a manager? Is it a, a publicist? Is it a tour manager? Is it, you know? It's a great question. Um, I'll go first. I think if you are going to hire someone that you inevitably have to pay, it's not a manager. It's not a freaking PR team. I would say the first one is a booking agent. Yeah. Just because, like, first of all, like, the way we learned is, like, we learned how to manage our career before we needed a manager. Like, you don't need a manager when you first start. You, I'm sorry. You just ain't that busy. Yeah. You just ain't that cool. I just like, I had I wanted one so badly when the channel blew up because I just had like a little bit of a damsel yeah, distress a complex. Like it's uh, a flex to be like, oh, hit my man. No, I just wanted someone to tell me what to do, and then yeah. I had to come to terms with like, no, I have to take responsibility. Absolutely, 100%. you got to take ownership. So it's like, we we learned how to do everything from the ground up, like from packing T-shirts to uploading your songs on TuneCore or whatever distribution <laughs> platform you want to use, and like those are valuable lessons to learn yeah. because. Now, Gary and I could still know how to do that shit if we needed to. And it's like, I think it's easier to run a business as a CEO if you've literally swept the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there, there's little little things. I mean, even like we had a financial plan that we, you know, came out with and, and that sort of thing. And we were keeping books of every week what we were spending and what we were making, that that sort of thing. Like little things. And I think, like Charlie said, it's like you need to know, one, every facet of your business, but you need to know, it's like even booking agent. Before we had a booking agent, we're we booking did, ourselves. We, we cold called. We co we like, hey, you know what? We're, we want to go to Where you want, Where you want to go? Let's go to West Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we literally call rest, anything that had live music. I don't care if it's a restaurant, pizza joint. We just call. We get 50 no's and then we get one. And it was like, yeah, it'd be sick. Yeah, it'd be, come, yeah on. come on. We can give y'all 50 bucks and some pizza. And so it's like, hey, we'll see you in Columbia, Missouri, you know, next week or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, we'll play there two nights. You know, and so it's like, and there was also playing live kind of like, that's one thing that 
it felt like we were actually doing something because we were playing shows and they were in like four or five different states, so it made it look like there's a perception that like oh they're touring, they're, they're not just yeah. it's not just posting a you know your shows this week down on Broadway or your hometown that you're playing every restaurant in the town. And fans are smart, like they know if you're busy. Like they, they know <laughs> if you're like up to something. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can look at a they dude do. like yeah. like shout out to our buddy Noah Hicks. Like you can look at a guy like that as a fan and be like, Oh, he's busy. Like he's yeah. he's doing it. Like yeah. like he's got the right thing going, he's pushing it, he's doing he's touring. He's, yeah. It's easy to see from a fan's perspective, in my opinion, that you're busy. Yeah. Oh, I've had to definitely like there are weeks where there's no video posted and I feel a pressure to be like Guys, it's just there's a lot going on, right? And there's not yeah. a lot going on. And people see yeah. right through it and they're yeah, like, yeah. just make a video. You're yeah. Or don't, like <laughs> yeah. whatever. You know, yeah. it's like don't bitch to yeah. us about yeah. it. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, I I think it's just you you will know when you've crossed those thresholds and it's just it gets to a point like growing problems. I mean that we call we call them white collar problems. When you're like you're scaling up and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, we don't have time for this, so we need to we need to find something to help aid this. Right. So, because we're at a point now where we can't, you know, go pack the t-shirts and send them off. Right. And, and it would actually hinder our creativity and like our what we need to be doing. Right. And so, like that's when you start putting those puzzle pieces together, and it's and I mean, I, I never think bad content is bad to have, but right now, like I said, if you got one of these, there's no excuse, and right. you don't need to pay, you know, a, a you know a digital person. You know, five hundred bucks for an acoustic video when you can just do it on your phone. Yeah, yeah. Get a ring light. Like, like, regard, <laughs> regardless if the quality's that much better or not. Like, if you're singing and it's good, people are gonna like it. Well, geez, it's like exactly your mentality that you're expressing on the sofa right now is the mentality kind of of this single you just dropped. Yeah. Yes. Like yeah. very much like the value of hard work. Yeah. And, yes. Um, it's called dying for a living. If you haven't yeah. heard it. Just a bit. Is this like, so So when I first heard the song, the obvious word that came to mind is honky tonk. It just has like a very, <clears throat> what is the word? Like rollicking, little bit naughty, boot stompy. Yeah. Those are kind of the, that's the word cloud in my head. Yeah. Um, is this, and like Burning at Both Ends kind of felt like more romantic, more it kind of, was, yeah. I mean, literally burn would be like a slow burn would yeah. be kind of how I describe some of the yeah. songs on that. Are you going for, is this just a song of kind of like, uh, that you're putting out or is the next kind of release going to be more in this direction? It's definitely going to be more in yeah. this direction. Uh, <laughs> man, 2020 kind of just put a lot of things in perspective and, and honestly, Charlie and I just... We've we've done everything in our career as shotgun approach. Everything it's like there's no like let's get it dialed in. Let's do it's like no nah, let's just do it. Let's just figure it out and then we'll take the repercussions just and just learn from it whatever. And, yeah. and really we were we kind of just had to come to Jesus and we we're like, dude, what are we listening to? What do I love and what do I want to say? And that's and that's really base level. And then I was like, dang dude, what well, isn't like you know going down to Music Row and just seeing if we can write the best hit today. It's like that kind of like ship has kind of sailed, mm-hmm. and we and also had decided like even even when we decided to make Burn at Both Ends, we still didn't make that record like how we believe a record should be made now. Yeah, it was like still kind of like a collection of the best songs at the that time. we felt like we had, and, yeah. and we're like, and then, and there's that that faint like it's not even like you're not even cognizant of it, but you're like maybe this will get us a. It's like this was still pretty safe. Yeah, I was like, this is safe. Let's and then. Oh, there's some definite like. Yeah, this is safe radio, hundred yeah. percent. And so it's and so we just kind of started writing this this record and the songs we were starting to put out. I was like, man, this is stuff like I'm really living, not what like. I'm, for the first time, I feel like I'm not saying something that people think I need to say. It's just like, hey, this is what I'm for the say. for the first time in my opinion. This record that is coming out soon is like an actual reflection of every other part of our business and how we are as people. It's yeah. just like, it's not safe. And it's not like what people think they're going to get from us. And so that's how we literally run our business and that's how we've decided we're going to write records and yeah. put out music. And our, our one thing is kind of changed. is like, man, 
authenticity is so important now and not that like you know that and so it's like and i think the consumer knows that now like they can sniff out what is and what isn't like who's chasing who's not. right and who's just kind of doing their thing because they like it mm-hmm. and and that's really kind of where we come from like the different artists that like i said i go back i don't listen to the radio charlie doesn't listen to the radio and it's like why are we sitting here trying to make radio music you know and we don't really even like live in that world or want to be in and that it's world. good to do that too because it takes a chip off your shoulder. Hundred percent, it gives you a little more peace. You know, yeah, like and so we were just like, "Dang, dude, let's just like write country music," and and it's like, let's talk about things that aren't just the base level things. And so you said at the beginning of your description, this, what, who are? Let's be honest about who we're listening yeah. to, and, and what is the answer to that? Like, honestly, man, when I when I put on my Spotify, I mean. First of all, it's a lot of non-country music, but the, when I do go to the country music, it's to the freaking modern day troubadours, man. Like it's like it is the Tyler Childers, it's the Coulter Walls, it's the Texas country thing. Like, and it's old. It's it's seventies, it's nineties. It's, it's, it's that, it's, and so it's like we just knew, like, man, in our hearts, like this is the music I want to put out. I don't care about what's hot now. I don't. I don't care. And so it's like I don't want modern things or whatever i want that stuff that's just like timeless, timeless yeah and that's so, a big theme of the the new direction right like and, and it's just timeless. like there's nothing more timeless than just like a good story and, mm-hmm. a, and acoustic, a good band acoustic guitar music, yeah. and 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 cut pedal steel and yeah. that that sort of thing and so we came into this record and uh what it started just writing itself really like this is this whole record was written besides one song was all written within the pandemic before we put this out. And uh, a lot of kind of revolving door names are on it, guys we love to write with. We wrote a lot with Brent Cobb on this record. Okay. Wrote a lot with Adam Hood. Okay. And And so it's just, and honestly, we were just, we wrote a lot by ourselves too. And so just putting these songs together and putting a record together, not just saying like, man, like, it's, we were literally writing to a, a record. It's not just like, hey, here's a collection of 10 songs. This is just what we like the best right now. It's like, there's some, I mean, we have the whole next record that that isn't even recorded yet. It's already done. It's already written. But it's just like, we just know it's kind of like, that's and just, probably half of the next one. Yeah, and so it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, when you're, it makes it more fun when you're writing records. It's like, no, we need, we need something like this. We don't just need to add You're writing to a to point it. instead right. of just being like, Hey, maybe someone will cut this. It's a, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're really kind of, a lot of this record, it's it's total opposite from the, the burning both ends. I'm not going to say there's not a love song on it, but there's not that. It's not the wedding, you know, musket on bloodline you got on burning we've both got, ends. And we've got plenty of those, and we're so yeah. thankful for those. But, like, we were just kind of ready to be like, let's turn the page a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Let's just make a new chapter. Like, and, like I said, we, we went into the band, we went into the studio with our touring band. Like, so that's who's on the record playing. And we literally took the, from first track to last track, every song flows together like a record. Like, it, sonically it flows. So it goes right into the next one. It's key changes, it's everything mm-hmm. like that. And it's like, pedal still gets an introduction to the record, and then it gets, a, it gets like a farewell to it, like in the record. So it's, and it's all these like little nuances. Even like the artistry part that like your fans won't even notice. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but, it, but it's like those little nuances that like what make records cool. It's like giving a product that's supposed to be listened from the back. And that's, that's really kind of the mindset for us. We're like, we, we want to be a record band. It's no more of like, you know, just like, oh, we'll put out sporadic stuff like we've done in the past. It's like, nah, here's, what we want to do, we want to put out a record, and this is supposed to be listened to front to back. Not going to say there's not going to be fun little scratch itch projects we're going to do yeah. down the road, but it's like, here's the record. This is what represents us, and the sound that's coming from this is like, I kind of like where that ship is kind of coming to port. Like, this is what you're going to be getting from us, like sonically. Not to say, like, we're not still going to put out love songs and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that, but. But it sounds like you figured out, and the way you're expressing yourself is kind of. It's kind of cool, like to think about all the things you did in the beginning of your yeah. career. You know, they weren't certainly weren't a waste, but you yeah, have to like not. open and look behind every yeah. door to be like, do I want to be in that room? Do I want to yeah. be in this one? And that's exactly I mean, got, it got us, kind of who you are. What we've done so far has got us here today. Yeah, so, like, we like, can't ever see no, here and be like, we regret this. Like we don't regret anything. anything. We've done. Yeah. Like it's got us to where we are now, and it's just kind of like this is. I mean, this we're just is, growing artists. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, just evolving. Like, oh, and Andre Agassi in his book Open. Um, one of the best books ever. Yeah. He 
uh, there's a part at the end where he says the thing he resents the most in interviews is when people say, you know, he was a bad boy. And like when people say, uh, talk about his transformation. And he's like, I hate when people say I've transformed into like a father and I run a charter school now. I was just forming. This was my first try. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I think that's the most beautiful thought to think about artists too is like, yeah. you were just forming. Yeah, yeah, it's like all, it's, everything's your first try. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it might have took us five, six years to realize that, and that, and and fortunately enough, like we put out stuff that people enjoyed, and and honestly, the m most important thing is making sure people love Gary and Charlie, not just the music we give. And so, like, that's important because like Eric Church could put out a record tomorrow, and it could be his his worst work, which I don't th I don't think it's possible for him to have bad work, <laughs> but it's like. People love Eric so much that they they can even look. Past, that's the place right. you want to be, right? Yeah. And so that's just kind of like where we've gotten. And all your favorite bands evolve and, and yeah. have different records. And like, dude, like, and look I, at the freaking Eagles, like, yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> one of the greatest bands of all time. They've done everything. Like, like and, mm -hmm. and you want everyone to like what you're doing. Like, obviously, I want everyone to love this new record. But there was a point where when we were in the studio, and I kind of realized I was like, man. I think you're in a good spot when I don't, I don't even care if they like it or not because I love it. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, and it's a project that I really love. And so even if this is not their favorite thing from us or, I mean, I pray to God it is. I pray that this is what, it's like, I feel like collectively we're like, dang, like I'm I'm really proud and really excited it, You're the mo this. You're being the most authentic you right. can be. And people, it's, again, there is so much weird similarity with being a YouTuber because like, yeah. No one thought thicket was a funny word but me. Yeah. But I was like, had to tell the merch company years ago, I was like, I think people will think it's funny. Yeah. Like, I think that is the shirt you print. Yeah. And I've been reprinting those for years. Yeah. No one right. thought a puzzle was like a cool idea but me, but I love it. Yeah. And people love what you love. Yeah, yeah. you get um, behind it, then and like yeah. inevitably it's gonna bleed through like that you like it. You yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> if they like you, then they're gonna be like, This is dope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're a tastemaker, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Well, I, I, man, I'm really thankful you guys came on the channel. This was, a, yeah. like, I was thinking I was going to take 20 minutes of your time. It took, like, an hour and a half of your time. Right. We get to talk. We're talkers. talkers. Um, We're well, talkers. We enjoy talking about this stuff. Takes one to know one. Yeah, so, yeah, we do. We do. So. Um, well, people know where to find you. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. give, them, give them your socials and stuff. Yeah. But Let's get on they'll, just be, yeah. 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 they'll just be linked down yeah. below. But uh, is the, I guess we'll see, we'll hear new music this fall, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, More coming music. sooner yeah. than well, later. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, I don't care. October 9th is the new single. So yeah. okay. the title track of the record is October 9th. Then yeah. we're going to have a... That's all I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, stay tuned. We'll send you the record, though. Yeah. Okay. How about Sweet. that? Sweet. Well, I, I, uh, I might listen to it. Yeah. I try to wait. I, I, that's another you know what's funny? A lot of people tell us that. Like, uh, even even like the other other people we've had, they're like, man, I, like, I appreciate that. Like, I appreciate the sentiment because I love getting like to feel like... You know, hey, I get to hear this before everybody, but they're like, I honestly want to hear it when everyone else does because it's genuine. Well, as reaction. a music, well, and as a music fan, there's like, as you get to experience it with yeah, just the anticipation. And like, as culture like splinters more and more and more, and like yeah. a good rated show on TV gets like a couple hundred thousand viewers, it's not. We don't have these moments like American Idol anymore, where it's like forty million people are yeah. tuning in the same night. Yeah. That was so fun, and so like I crave like. When an Adele record comes out, yeah. I'm like, in the oh, world or, explodes. Or Taylor like, like releases yeah. something, and you're just like, oh my gosh, we're all gonna sit down and do this at the same time. Yeah. And in my little niche of country, I'm like, oh, I same got thing. Like, yeah, yeah, just as many as Adele are gonna be like, uh, let's listen to the Musket exactly. Eye Bloodline. Same record. thing, exactly. <laughs> anyway, thanks guys for coming yeah. on the channel. Yeah, thanks for having us, great. And awesome. fans, so. Yeah, sweet. All right. Um,